Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. Heads up, I'm filming when it's raining and everything and there's a thunderstorm, so there might be raining and thunder in the background. Not much I can do about that. <laughs> so today I'm finally continuing on with my MBTI recommendation series with intuitive book recommendations. So I've already done the first preference, introversion versus extroversion, for recommendations, and today I'm doing intuitive, which is for the intuitive versus sensing preference. And as I've said previously, I fall on the intuitive side. So about this preference, intuition versus sensing really has to do with how you take in information and how you absorb things to make meaning of situations. So for intuitive people, they're very meanings oriented and pattern recognition is kind of a thing, kind of symbolic patterns not so much actual physical sensory stuff. These people would be really inclined towards metaphors as a way of making meaning and understanding things. Again, something other than the five senses. It's like a feeling, a gut kind of thing that you get. So I thought that it would be appropriate for intuitive book recommendations to be very symbolism heavy and books that use a lot of metaphor or books that are a metaphor for maybe a particular ideal. So a lot of these you'll find have religious symbolism because that's one of the most common symbolisms that I've seen within books and some of them have to do with meaning making from your own experience. So once again here are five recommendations for intuitive people. Also, disclaimer that just because I say that these books have some sort of intuitive features doesn't mean that everybody who falls on intuition is going to like them, and also if you are a sensing person you could still like these books. This is just me making sense of the MBTI through book preferences. <laughs> so the first one that I have to recommend is one that it's been over five years since I've read and I really should do a reread because I'm going based off of my memory and experience of reading this book in an academic setting as a college kid. <laughs> and that's Siddhartha. This is kind of a philosophical classic that's taking a lot from religious symbolism and like a religious storyline. It's very Buddhist and it has a lot to do with figuring out spirituality. This is following Siddhartha when he meets the Buddha in this made-up story that takes place in India and he goes on his own spiritual journey where he's exploring his religion and spirituality and like who he is. This book is described as being like a combination of Eastern and Western influences and I think that's really interesting and I think that people who are intuitive will enjoy kind of looking back and connecting all of these different religious inspirations. However, this is very philosophical in tone so if philosophy isn't your thing you might not enjoy this. But I'd be willing to bet that at least for a lot of intuitive people, philosophy is something that they like. Going back to that meaning making. My second recommendation feels really obvious because I mentioned religious symbolism, and that is The Chronicles of Narnia. I feel like I don't really need to talk about what Narnia is about, but basically it's classic middle grade fantasy. But these books are all taking place or are about Narnia, this kind of portal fantasy world. And the first book that he wrote was this one, where they go through a wardrobe into Narnia. <laughs> this is full of Christian symbolism specifically, like I kind of knew that as a kid but not really that Aslan is like a god Jesus lion. <laughs> And I'm actually interested in rereading these as well to pick up on these symbols that I didn't totally get as a kid. But I love Lewis as a writer now, particularly his nonfiction that's a bit more theological because I like theology even though I don't know where I fall on a lot of things. And I suspect that a lot of these themes would really jump out at me if I were to reread these books now as an adult because I did pick up on some of it as a kid. My third recommendation is Man's Search for Meaning. Meaning. <laughs> it's practically there in the title. This is psychology that also is kind of a combination again with philosophy. This is a classic memoir of Frankl's experience as a psychiatrist living in Auschwitz and then being an Auschwitz survivor. Frankl was going through this experience and having to make meaning of what this was for him and how was he going to go about his life once he got out of this camp and his wife is dead and everybody is dead and, he, and so he essentially started the existential movement in psychology which is all about meaning making and the point of life and questions and things like that and he specifically created logotherapy which is like therapy about meaning. It's kind of like a subsection of existential therapy. I like existential therapy not so much for practicing myself as a therapist because it's a bit too not abstract but lacking in techniques and direction 
for me, <laughs> especially when working with kids, but it is something that I resonate with a lot personally. And though I'd recommend this for most people just because I think that it is really valuable to think about and consider so long as you can handle reading about his experience in Auschwitz, I think that for the intuitive person who is making meaning more on that gut level rather than the sensory level, that this makes a lot of sense. Though, as I mentioned, he started Logotherapy and the last or the second part of this book is about Logotherapy. It's only like 25 pages or something, but if you have zero interest in counseling and therapy to begin with, then this might not be for you, but I still think it's worthwhile. And my next two recommendations are actually graphic novels, which is interesting because you would think that graphic novels would be primarily a sensory thing, but I think that there are graphic novels that have intuitive properties. Because though art style and everything like that is sensory, sometimes it's used for symbolic reasons or you're having to put specific pieces together that might not be there, which I'll talk about in a second. <laughs> the first one I want to recommend is My Favorite Thing is Monsters, which I read recently for the Booktube SFF Awards and I loved this. My Favorite Thing is Monsters is actually a horror mystery graphic novel, which is not typically my thing, but like I said, I really enjoyed this. This is following a young girl named Karen Reyes who is kind of investigating the murder, or she believes it's a murder, of her neighbor. And this neighbor is a World War II era survivor, and so she's learning a lot about this woman's history at the same time as she's investigating everything and also learning about some family dynamics that she finds disturbing. But what I think is intuitive about this is the actual art style, because these are essentially diary or journal entries for Karen, where she's depicting her days. You can see this is on like lined paper and everything, so it's as if this was actually her journal. And Karen perceives herself as a werewolf. In all of her drawings, because Karen is really into that like kind of grunge comic-y scene, she draws herself as a werewolf because this is how she perceives herself in the world. And I know that some people didn't like that, but I think that that kind of clicked with me like, okay, this is how you want to view yourself. That's cool. Go for it. <laughs> and also seeing how the art style was depicting other things, like for example, the woman who is murdered is often colored in blue because she is viewed as like a very sad person. So there are these little cues that you can pick up on that aren't like necessarily directly explained throughout the graphic novel, it's just something that you kind of get. At first I was very confused because I thought that Karen maybe was actually a werewolf and I didn't get it. And so I wonder if the people who were bothered by that were more sensory because it's not actually the way things are. And then like I said, my final recommendation for intuitive books is another graphic novel, and that is The Arrival. This one is told entirely in pictures. There are no words in this graphic novel, which I know might seem like, wait, if it's all pictures then how is it intuitive because this is just taking in things through your senses. But because there are no words in this graphic novel, you're having to make guesses about the things that are happening. Go with what you think, how you interpret this, instead of necessarily having an explanation on the page. Here's an example. I also really love this art style. It's really nice. This is really about an immigrant experience. You're seeing this guy, we don't have names for these people because there are no words, but you're seeing him leave and then trying to bring family over and it's in this fantasy world and it's really kind of quirky. But I found it so impactful as well because there are no words and how does that relate to the immigrant experience and not being able to actually speak with other people if you're not speaking their language and only having these pictures to go on. And if someone was completely lacking in intuition, I don't know how they could make sense of this book. Not that I think anybody's completely lacking in intuition, but you know. <laughs> so here are my intuitive book recommendations. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that this made sense. It's kind of hard for me to explain intuition because intuition is something that you don't exactly explain usually because it's very gut feeling-ish. <laughs> so I did my best describing it as a way of taking in information and making sense of it, looking for patterns and making meaning, and being very influenced by symbolism and metaphor. Hopefully I'll get to the sensing book recommendations sometime within the next couple of weeks. Things have been a little bit crazy as I'm coming on the last month of the semester, so we'll see. 
fingers crossed. But that is going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and also if you have any other books that you think would work well for people who fall on the intuitive side. Thank you for watching, hope you have a good day, and until next time, 